And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to David because this, this network process begins to set up a thinking about, well, then also where do you place your station within this? How does the station become this kind of key node within this district that you're creating? And David uh, wanted to really kind of talk through some of these great places that, have, that, that we can look at from other parts of the country to give us services. Just one quick thing before David. I know some of you did come here to talk uh, about the network, and again, I just want to uh, let you know that there's a room set up next door to us. If anybody from Ashley Street wants to go and talk about things, we'll be over there. So if nobody wants to go. <laughs> So uh, I'm David Spillane and I'm part of uh, the DOT's consultant team and I'm going to sort of set this up in terms of um, talking about some of the kind of issues we might think about in terms of what would make a really good urban uh, transportation station. I'm then going to show you, you know, some case studies from some other communities um, which have some elements, some good, some bad in each case, some which are parallels to some of the kind of things we're working at and thinking about and struggling with here. And then um, Bill Kenworthy from the city's consultant teams going to talk about some of the ideas the city's been thinking about. And I hope what I'm going to sort of set up in terms of, you know, what we might think about what would make a good station um, and some examples from other places will be helpful then in terms of the specific conversation about some of the ideas the city's bringing forward. Um, you know, for you to be thinking about as you're looking um, at, at this. So, um, you know, at a, at a very basic level, I mean, these are these are some of the things I'm going to go through. You might think about in terms of creating a successful, you know, urban, you know, transportation center as we're thinking about for rail and bus. Well, it should be in a good location. It should be centrally located. Um, it, sh it needs to be well connected to residents and jobs. Um, I think it should be, in this case, an iconic design, something that um, speaks to the importance um, of uh, transportation and, um, you know, within, within the region. Um, it should be a catalyst for future things to evolve and, and develop um, around it. And I think that, importantly, in urban context, it's really something that wants to be compact. It, 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 it minimizes the amount of land. So let, let me just take you through these. And there's a handout on the table, you know, one page where these are, are, are written down. So I just want to take them very, you know, quickly, so one by one. Um, you know, central location, um, you know, I, I always think in these situations you want to think about a location first that serves existing businesses and existing residents. Um, but also provides opportunity for future growth. But the location should really serve, be, be well positioned to serve um, existing businesses and, and residents, and then look uh, to the future. I mean, second, uh, you know, well connected. Uh, you can be centrally located, but if you don't have strong pedestrian connections from the stations to where people um, are looking to go, um, you're really not going to have a successful station. So that's about pedestrian connections. It's also about strong bicycle connections. Um, it also means typically in stations that you want to separate how the vehicles get access to the station, how pedestrians get access to the station, um, so, so that the flows in and out of the stations um, are, really, um, are really strong. And I think typically in some of the most successful stations, it means that the primary entrance really is a pedestrian entrance and there really are conflicts with vehicles and buses and taxis and other things um, of that kind. Um, third, um, you know, I, I think is, is really about you know iconic design, something that sort of stands out, stands for the importance. Um, and there are different kind of um, iconic designs. This happens to be one Tony shared with us last week um, from a city in the Netherlands. This is Arnhem, an interesting station, interesting location. But iconic, you know, could be in traditional design or it could be more contemporary design. Uh, very often in some of the best stations, um, they're linked to a public space around the station, whether that's a station square or a gathering place, so people can congregate uh, and enjoy uh, the area around the station. 
Also, I think it's important that the station is really visible, that as you look down major streets, as you're far away from it, it's something that's visible and you can see, not something that's buried and hard um, to detect. And I think to, to be you know, really successful, um, you know, the, the, the ability to combine you know, bus and rail at a single you know, point, uh, so you're really going to the transportation station, it doesn't matter whether you're getting on a train or, or getting on a bus, so we can coalesce all the services in that location. So iconic design. Um, a catalyst, um, I think that, that means that um, you know, the station's in a place where it promotes you know, future growth and urban activity around it. Um, so some of the things there you know, that are consideration is you, know, you don't put the station you know, on the site that would be the most appealing for future private sector development around it. You find the right place for it and try and maximize the potential or consider options for station location that maximize potential for other kinds of development you're looking for um, around that. And that, that might be um, development, but also might be open space, you know, or a civic space, or civic uses and functions. And last, um, you know, you're really looking for a station that's as compact as it can be, um, so you can really, um, maximize opportunities for open space development for other kinds of development and, and you don't have a station that really sort of spreads out and really takes over uh, the district um, it's looking at. This also raises sort of questions about how much frontage the station has. Um, you know stations can be very large, they can have frontages which are hundreds of feet long um, and are relatively dead when there's not a lot of activity there. So, so thinking about ways that you can site a station um, so it really has active frontages as it faces the city and is as compact in terms of the way it fits in um, is, is another sort of consideration. So I'm going to very quickly go through a couple of you know, case studies um, which um, you know, I'm sure there are other ones we could look at but some of these you know, offer some similarities to what we're doing. I'm going to start uh, with Back Bay Station in Boston, uh, talk very briefly about Union Station in Connecticut, um, the um, Amtrak Station in, in Providence, which is part of a much larger development, which has many similarities to the issues we're dealing with here. Uh, Portland Main Station, which, which is less of an urban station, and then very briefly, South Station in Boston. So let me take the first one. So Back Bay Station, um, and you'll see in each of these, um, you know, station is centered in the middle here. And what we've drawn each case is a five minute, um, you know, walking distance. But if you're familiar with Back Bay Station, it sits between uh, historic neighborhoods on one side and really a downtown environment on the other. In many ways, very similar to the siting of, uh, um, you know, a station in the Asylum Hill area and with downtown on one side and then the neighborhoods are uh, really uh, to the other. It's a pretty iconic station design. It's got very strong bicycle and pedestrian connections. It actually is at the, at, at the terminus um, of the Southwest Corridor Park, which is a major pedestrian and bike <coughs> corridor which feeds into the core of the city. And I think the station does a pretty good job of separating you know, how buses access the building versus how uh, pedestrians uh, do so. It's surrounded by a mixed-use transit-oriented development. Um, it has um, pretty successfully um, you know, integrated a below-grade rail line, such as we have here, um, and a below-grade hi grade highway. And it works all those things in, in ways that when you're looking at it on the surface, it's pretty seamless. You wouldn't really think that's what was going on. And it's been reasonably successful, but not perfect, I think, in terms of integrating um, you know, parking and retail as part of the station complex. So this is the station, um, you're looking at it, we're sort of in the, the park that comes up from the other side of the street and really ends with the station. There's a station in the middle. Um, this is sort of housing development, cafe space, you know, open space, you know, high quality, you know, space that really sort of focuses um, on the station building uh, you see uh, right there. And this is looking at it, um, you know, in its street, um, it does a pretty good job in terms of the front. Taxis do pick up and drop off there, but the buses um, are not there. You see the bike share station across the street, and the park is moving off um, on that area. 
It makes a pretty strong impression in, on the streetscape. It includes some retail um, along its frontage, along um, the street, um, along the street. Um, um, David, right there. which is the station? Is it the tall building in the back? Station is this building here. Okay. We sort of see the see the arch, large station hall, and there are lower wings on this side. This side's got um, small restaurant inside um, that is along that, that edge of the street. This this may sort of help a little bit more. So what we've got here is, you know, here's the station building. Um, here's the garage that's beside it. Um, a rail. This is the Southwest Corridor Park I talked with. That the the, um, the rail lines below that park. Um, connects up here. This is an important bike corridor. Station sits here. Rail lines continue through there. Um, I-90, the Massachusetts Turnpike, is coming through here. It goes below this garage structure on this location. We've got street level retail all around um, here. Um, open space and pedestrian plazas um, over the highway that comes below these streets. And if you're, you know, in this area, you really wouldn't be aware that either the rail line or the highway is going through that corridor. There's a drop-off, you know, pickup area here to the back uh, where, you know, buses, uh, you know, come in and out. Um, so a lot of things here that are, I think are relatively similar. I think many of them are done uh, pretty successfully here. It does have this unique combination of below-grade rail you know, highway, parking structure, uh, station, station that fits, I think, pretty well with uh, with a historic street. So, uh, you know, next, very quickly, Union Station um, in um, in New Haven. One of the big struggles historically with Union Station is Union Station is too far from the center of New Haven. So, what you see, so I, I think it doesn't really meet the standard of centrally located. You know, it sits right here. This is New Haven Green here. So that's you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, area around the station um, is something the city's working very hard on. It's a very confusing area. There's a lot of disconnected streets there. Um, it's pretty confusing. The city's working hard to solving these problems now, but for, for you know, more than 30 years, very little's happened around the station. It's sort of a little bit beached in that area. And the State Street Station, which as you can see there, um, you know, doesn't have quite the same service, but it's certainly better located in terms of its connection uh, to New Haven Green. And one of the consequences here of just how poor this pedestrian environment is and how hard it is to figure out how to get through here is, you know, we have a tremendous number of folks who work um, here at Yale New Haven Hospital, which are, are literally a five minute walk from the station but many of those people are getting shuttle buses because it's just confusing. It feels like it's much further. It's hard to get there. Um, so, um, you know, so there are sort of problems there. So we, we've got weak pedestrian connections. They're confusing. Um, you know, as you come out of the station, it's a, actually a beautiful station building, but there are shuttles and taxis and confusion. And if you're a pedestrian, you're fighting your way uh, through all of that. And that's something, again, the city's uh, working on. And just because of all these factors, um, you know, hasn't been a very successful area in terms of supporting, you know, additional transit-oriented development, which would create the kind of environment that would make it pleasant uh, to walk through. So that's what it looks like in front of the, the station. This picture doesn't completely get it, but you've got all this drop-off and pick-up for taxis. People are coming out of the station. They're trying to figure out how to get across the street, and then where, uh, then, then. Um, where to go. So that's a, that's a work in progress. Um, next, um, Providence Station is, is really pretty interesting. Um, this station was relocated um, as part of the Capital Center uh, redevelopment. Um, the station really has become the anchor for a whole new development uh, you know, district, which continues to evolve. It's probably halfway through its evolution. Um, like us, the station is below grade. It was above grade, but it was pushed laterally into a hill and then dropped uh, below grade. Um, pretty strong pedestrian connections between downtown and neighborhoods and, and also uh, you good access from the, um, from the new station to the capital complex in a way that's pretty similar. And um, you know, in this case, uh, the new station uh, left the existing station vacant and that's been really successfully 
uh, reused uh, for a different uh, purpose. So you see again the five minute walking distance station is here, downtown Hartford, down city. This is sort of Capitol Center, which I'll show a picture. And then we've got the Capitol um, up there. So um, this probably makes the picture a little, um, a little clearer. Um, down here we have what was the station historically. Tracks are coming in through here. They used to come down here and then come around like this and they've moved, been moved up so they're in this corridor. So you see the tracks here. That's the station. They disappear below grade here. There's open space over the tracks which just extends the open space uh, you know, up to the capital. Um, this development has been sort of master planned so that you've got mixed-use development, a number of housing towers. This is the headquarters of Blue Cross Blue Shield. You know, a number of housing and uh, mixed-use development projects. And then this important civic space here, which is uh, Water Place Park, which is where, um, you know, there are these uh, many, many different kind of performances and civic activities. But then an open corridor that maintains views of the capital coming down to this new street, uh, which, which carries a fair amount of traffic, but is a well-designed street that's Memorial, um, that's Memorial uh, you know, Boulevard. Um, so I think this, this has, in many ways, I think many of the pieces we're working with. Um, it has, um, you know, it's a new development district. It includes open space. It connects to the city. Uh, the train station is, is, is one of the catalysts um, for development, and it's fairly, you know, it's fairly compact. This is the um, this is the historic station. Um, you know, as it uh, at this this postcard, it was called the New Union Station. Um, no longer no longer new. Um, this building, which you saw, has been repurposed. Um, there's a a brew pub, a, a Providence Foundation has offices there, a range of other uses. Um, there's park space here on either side, and you know this area, which was an access point to the station, is uh, now a um, space that is, is an ice rink, outdoor ice rink in, in winter, and it hosts performances and events um, in the in the summer. So that that's you know s something where the station is really being sort of effectively. Um, use. But one of the things this whole project did is it really opened the city up to the capital, which at that time was really separated uh, by rail lines in that location there. So I think there's some lessons here. Um, you know, is, 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 is the building iconic? Well, I'm not sure it quite gets there. It's a fairly modest, um, you know, building. It's clearly been designed to be somewhat sympathetic to the, uh, the capital. But um, that's that's one side of it. Not looking so good for, as you know for a pedestrian in this particular image. It's a little better than that in reality. And then and then the other side, and this is the station um, facing um, the road, which uh, you know goes up to the Capitol complex. You know the, this this is not a successful you know station edge on, on that um, you know on that primary open space. Um, you know that the vehicles on here, you know, don't um, you know don't help. And I think you know one could argue whether a you know one-story you know build station building is the right use uh, for that kind of park um, you know park frontage, or whether there were opportunities for more significant amounts of development there. Uh, Portland, Maine. I'm going to go this this very quickly. This is again not a centrally located station. I think it's a, it's a station that. In downtown Portland, <coughs> over there, um, you know, it's where the rail line is. I think there was a, you know, an interest in development springing up around the station that really hasn't uh, materialized. It really focuses on highway access. You know, it's vehicular oriented. This is what it looks like. It's not compact. You I know, mean, essentially the bus station and the train station spread out. It's a parking environment. It's not a it's not a, fr a pedestrian friendly. Um, the environment. And then lastly, you know, this one is very quick. This is South Station, um, you know, in Boston, which is which has been an interesting story because South Station really was a, you know, declining, shabby transportation center uh, 25 years ago, and it was really sort of reemerged as a, um, you know, iconic, sort of vibrant, 
uh, place in the city. And that, that has been part of the big dig in that there were large highway viaducts that went in front of this building, which are now gone, and it's the end of a um, major urban greenway. Uh, the building has been rehabilitated. Um, but the one thing I wanted to talk about with South Station was really, you know, that's clearly how it looks like from, um, you know, the front classic iconic, um, you know, station, um, some of the new access ways, you know, some of these pyramid structures to let people go under the street. Um, but the point I want to make, you know, I guess I will also say here that this is a, a case where the streets on the side of the station um, have highway elements below grade. This is the train station. This is the bus station behind. Um, there's parking on the roof over the bus station. Uh, this is the most visible and prominent part, but I think they've done a pretty good job you know, on this, on this side. And one of the difficulties sometimes with these stations is where you get the long edges, particularly of bus stations, they don't make particularly appealing you know, urban um, street edges. But I think you know, they've done a pretty good job here. That's the bus station you're looking at the right. Um, you know, in terms of creating a street that's got appealing landscape, the pick up and drop off works pretty well. But importantly, the buses aren't going in and out here. That bus access is really separated from the uh, pedestrian access. And I think that's the last one. So um, hopefully that will um, <coughs> help <laughs> as uh, Bill talks through uh, you know, some of the thoughts the city's coming forward with in, in terms of um, you know, the, the station, our elements of this station in the district, um, and how that might work. I'll, I'll just sort of add before I stop, I mean, one of the conversations I think we've had is, you know, are we confident that this is broadly, this area is the right location uh, for, uh, for the station? And that could be north, it could be south of Asylum. And I think our team's pretty confident this is the right location for the station. And it really can meet any each of these criteria uh, we've outlined, but but how well it meets them really, I think, ultimately relates to how the station is designed and how it relates to the environment around it. And these are you know very critical uh, design questions which we'll get. But with that, thank you, David. Hi, I'm Bill Kenworthy. I'm a principal and leader of planning uh, for our New York office um, for HOK, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of getting. The, chance to tell you like the end of the story. These guys have built up such a great, um, Tom and, and David, the ideas about the connections to the city, the DNA of the train station. Now, my drawings are really about what that might mean for Hartford. And these are just some initial sketches and some ideas about how a train station, a transit center, and the surrounding development might be able to fit into the city. So this first sketch is looking at a train station in red, north of Asylum, a bus station in blue um, to the east of the highway across from the existing train station. Um, green showing the, the potential open space connections outside of the street grid, so opportunities for public realm and park spaces. And then the orange in all these sketches is, is the opportunity for new mixed-use development that can occur around the stations. And, so, and where are the highway ramps coming out? Highway ramps, um, at the moment, this is consistent with the trans systems options that they had talked about coming out on Bushnell West, and there's another one coming out on Edwards here. Um, but the real strategy for the story um, is about putting a train station to the north, the bus station nearby as close as we can in terms of that compact footprint. The idea of connecting Garden Street down maybe to the back of the train station as an opportunity for vehicular drop-off so you can keep asylum clean in terms of drop-off and loading. The opportunity to have more robust drop-off back here. And a street to connect into Spruce through the existing station is to take a lot of that loading and servicing for vehicles off of the train station from asylum. The other idea behind this is really a diagonal connection through the block south of asylum that could create an open space of the corridor up to uh, the Garden Street area in Asylum Hill, down to the State House in Bushnell Park. And you see the residual um, areas for opportunities for development that can occur around that. Um, in this location, uh, we're showing that, you know, maybe that there's uh, some access drives that go around the bus station and new development. This could also be decked over open spaces that could connect east-west in addition, uh, but not focused on open spaces, not necessarily building development on top of the highways, because that's more of a challenge but looking at creating development around um, the highway that allows for um, um, connections and even an opportunity for more open space development over the highway locations, but again, trying to keep development off the highway footprint and the ramp footprint itself. 
So this is one idea about how you might be able to develop a, a transit center and mixed-use framework of, of development around um, this part of town. How do the buses get? What's the route for the buses? The buses could either work off spruce here, or there might be options to bring off this new drive that come through here. So there's two frontages of streets that there could be bus connections. That's part of the program we're still studying in terms of the operations, how that would actually work in this part of town. And, and, and just before, because I'm glad that everyone's immediately excited about the ideas. These are really just formative thoughts. And the, one of the goals of today is to get your reaction, uh, to begin thinking about how the train and the bus, CT fast track, the developments all relate so that as we continue to evolve these notions of how this fits in, what are some of the things that you see as being really problematic, but some of the things you see as being possibly really ineffective. So just wanna, you know, it's not like we know exactly where every stop and spot is, but there, there, this is an attempt to begin that process, so. Yeah, if we could just go jump back, you know, I, I have looked at this, and one of the things that uh, concerns me is the yeah, Salome is gonna become a very, uh, um, urban street mm -hmm. and the station being right at the street uh, frontage um, it, uh, it really doesn't allow for an open space that you really want to have mm -hmm. in front of the, the, the station mm -hmm. I don't have anything against this the solution but I think this could be improved if the station was set back from the street maybe mm -hmm. that maybe the depth of the station itself sure. to allow that open space in front of the station. At the size of the sketch, we're, we're, we're starting to suggest that. We can certainly add more. There's about 30 feet of sidewalk in front of the station from the drop-off area. There could be even more, though. We could right. study if there's greater right. open spaces. But the right. intention here was to kind of begin to shape that on the north and pull it through so there's the beginning of that network. But that, that feedback is very important for us. Um, if I could just talk about the option in the south, because that gets at another configuration of open space and how we might do that. Because again, the connection to the city, the opportunity for civic spaces around the train station is something consistent with many of the train stations that we've seen in the studies that David and we have done looking at um, the opportunities here. In this case, we're looking at um, uh, a location south of the asylum. In this case, we've um, redirected Farmington um, into our development through here, breaking the, the trident that way, locating the bus station to the south of that train station. Breaking the trident allows us a couple things. It allows us to stick a nose of that train station up into the view corridor from Asylum from downtown, looking up the hill, so you can have a very visible location for your train station, as well as from the west down the existing Asylum and Farmington geometries that exist today. So this building becomes very prominent in this case. Would that be uh, prominently visible from the park with the two, the orange um, <coughs> development sites that you've shown? Between the two. If that was really important in this scheme, we could find a way to begin to cut the development back so you can maintain those view quarters up. In this case, it's a little bit of a different option. We're looking at bringing a square along a sign to create opportunities for address for the train station as well as the new development to create an opportunity for here for open space over the highway area. Again, you don't want to build buildings over there. And to keep the con continuity of the um, Garden Street corridor, not necessarily through that square, but into this development area here and then the shifting of that alignment down so you could have a, a, a connection to the park this way. A smaller aperture than we were drawing in the previous scheme, as you can see, but just another way we could connect through and create more opportunities for development frontage on the park. But again, these are initial ideas, so mm -hmm. if, you, if everyone thought we should open that up more, we could make a better connection. And, where, the and where are the highway ramps? The oh, highway ramps in the state are still reflecting the scheme that was presented by Trans Systems. They're really looking little, okay. Well, again, and I think the, the idea here is to is to use that template of where, where we're looking at the ramps to begin to see feasibility of integrating and building in. You know, I think there is, we, we are all working together to look at how those ramps are positioned exactly and how they relate to the local street system as, as we go through this process. The ramps, so, the ramps can probably be nudged here and there if they had to be too, couldn't they? So. so in this scenario of Broad Street, which is um, sort of terminates at Farmington Ave and some of the other scenarios would become a, a higher, looks like it would become a higher volume motor vehicle traffic street. So in that case, I would say it's crucial to restore for bikes and pedestrians the north-south direct route of Flower Street. Because then we lose, mm -hmm. I get, we, we gain some available passability, it's still not direct, mm -hmm. but 
when that gets cut off, but then we lose that <coughs> in this area. If, if we could enhance the connection of this diagonal garden through through a square, through a park space here and down through here, would that be a, a suitable route that could be taken north south or do you no. need a more direct route? No, because we're trying to go that way, not That's important go a mile out of the way. Yeah. Now just I mean, we're looking top down, but when I'm thinking about this spot, you're on a that street right in front of the train station is a steep hill. This one here? Uh, nope. This one? Uh, nope. Train the one, the red oh, going up the hill. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Right. Yeah, so uh, just like site selection wise and pedestrian access from downtown to there, um, I don't thinking about placement relative to at the top of a steep hill. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, your sight line's gonna be better. You're gonna be able to see the capital from there, uh -huh. but your pedestrians or anybody that has mobility limitations is gonna be a little hesitant to take the climb. So between the, if just to frame the conversation in terms of the two station locations, is this any better having a site closer I think it's, I think it's better, uh -huh. yeah. The challenge is trying to hit, at least with the, the rail platform location right now, is really configured here. Yeah. So we need to try to get the portion of the train station to hit that in some location. So that's part of the challenge is how we site the, the rail station at this point. Do you have a version of this with the topographic lines? Because I think that would be helpful uh, to could, see that could, slope. We could lay that on there yeah. easily. I, I agree with that statement because I think one of the things that kind of goes underappreciated here is the elevation shift that's occurring mm -hmm. across this parcel. And to go back, I, I know we're talking about placement, but uh, when we get the iconic design, you know, if this becomes a thriving uh, facility like it should be, it will be seen by more citizens today than almost anywhere else in town. And it's the opportunity, I think, to put a really iconic design at a place that would be visibly seen from quite a few uh, different perspectives. And, you know, I'm just always concerned we get so practical and functional and then we get in and we'll spend billions of dollars, plop something in like a single story concrete mm -hmm. kind of fiasco. Yes, so you'll have lost an opportunity. So uh, aesthetics, I, I do think, uh, go a long way. Make a statement, it would be something that would be, be able to be seen from quite a few areas in downtown for quite a few decades. So. Uh, I'd hate to just lose perspective with that. So placement and its relative views. Uh, I think of the bridge they did in Boston and how, how you can see it from so many different angles and how it's added to kind of the skyline. So uh, I don't have so much of a concern about how it flows in and around. I'm sure you'll make those traffic patterns work, but uh, I would like to see this not lose focus of the opportunity to do something that's a bit of a statement here. So. Yeah. In each, both of these drawings, are you proposing eliminating the YWCA? That building is now gone, and Farmington Avenue is curving. This particular alignment does take out the YWCA, but we're looking at strategies that leave the building in place so we could still have a, a, a routing of Farmington that doesn't come into the Trident, but comes into Broad Street. So I, I think the, 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 what we're trying to look at, in, you know, at this scale, is, is there a way to bring Farmington down? Uh, we had showed some pictures before of different ways of thinking about it. One of the challenges of bringing Farmington to the south or to the east is keeping it far enough away from asylum so that you can process traffic and also bringing it down in such a way that it doesn't impact upon the ramps. And so we're looking at a lot of different ways in which it can be feasible to bring it down. This, this is just one option. Does that include raising the, the light of UCA? In this particular scheme, we've, we've kinked Farmington Avenue over in the spot where that the YMCA is, but it is not. It's not required. We're looking at alignments to keep the YMCA, but still make the same option. It's not as steep, so we're testing that now. But yeah, I would hope. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Option one, you basically put in a new bus station right across the street from the existing uh, Union Station. I'm just wondering why. You're not considering continuing, continuing to use the station as the bus station. Well, that's, that certainly can still be part of the options for looking at this. We've tried to keep as compact a footprint for the transit center, both rail and buses, as we can. Also integrating the parking component, which in most cases is stacked with the bus footprint because they happen to be simpatico in terms of the current configuration of the program. But I think that there's conversation about how that um, uh, could be broken up into different pieces today, which may include the existing station. And can I ask you a question about that? What, 
what what would be the in your mind the, the opportunity associated with keeping the buses at the existing station? Well, I mean it's a historic building. It's um, you know. So it's use the buses to make it a new. What was that? Use the buses and the fact that the, the, you sold the transit facility at that location to make that a new. Okay. And then, I mean, really, then the image is right across the street. I think you know what's the, there now, where the boxes is parking for using the station. Mm -hmm. So it just yes. seems silly to me to build, spend all this money to build a new mm -hmm. station when there's one right there. Mm -hmm. right. That's a historic part of the park. As an addition to that, though, wouldn't it be possible to get rid, of, to get rid of all the tracks and everything that go into even the station today? So that would become a building that was available for redevelopment. I would and it would be a great redevelopment. Sure. That's correct. Historic building. That's an opportunity. I think it would be better unencumbered by any legacy uses like buses and very attractive to a developer. If you decide that Union Station is not going to be a part of a new transportation system, have you looked at an alternative to jamming both the bus station and the train station into this area where it's traditionally been a transportation center? I wondered if you thought of looking farther north, say along Walnut Street, where the challenges of the photography would be less, where you have a lot of open space that's already vacant that could be used. Looking yes. up in this area, up in that area there, for the bus facility, both for both, because you're right on the train, you're on the train tracks and and the street system, and you don't have to struggle and stress to try to figure out a stretch the buildings to cover both of those in that area because they're all right in the same place. And I don't know who owns the land, but it's, it's empty, it's vacant, it's a parking lot, it's that sort of thing. It's up by the public safety <coughs> complex. That starts to bump into the lumber yard, I think. Yeah, the lumber yard has looked to move for years and years, so I mean, we can make a deal. The, um, the, the main vertical head house locations move down to the platform or to this red box in the, 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 this location in the station footprint. That red box and that red box. So that's the flexibility of location, at least with the existing. What I like location. about what I like about farther north is you don't have to descend. You're right on the track. You, you come, the hill has actually come down. It's sort of flattened out. I think there's enough of a there's enough of an elevation rise that you could use the, that for parking or something that, that doesn't show. But basically, it's flatter. That was. Can I ask a follow-up? Yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah, in terms of that moving the station north, I mean, we've been trying to get a front door of the train station as a civic front door on Asylum or Farmington in some way. In that case, it wouldn't be so important. Is that a priority for folks to try to have the train station have a civic <coughs> front door on either of those main streets? I, well, well, I don't, I don't, no. th I don't yeah. think it is, number one. And number no. two is it would open up that space for more creative development and okay. not have to figure out how to squeeze a transportation center into a spot that really made us a little awkward. And it, rather than use what, what do you call it, Occupy Hartford or something, that park, it mm -hmm. seems to me has a lot more other opportunities that, for development that would be better than a train station. However, um, you know, I, I just want to, I want to add one thing to that discussion which I think will, um, help us all be sort of on the same page, because the city did ask um, trans systems to take a look at moving the station northward. And the issue is that you need to have um, a thousand feet of straight track. And it's not really possible to get that as we move around because of other lines coming in and out. Um, and I don't know that in this set of slides there's anything to illustrate that, but I, we were pretty satisfied after the look was made that, no, you couldn't, because we saw a lot of benefit of opening up new development opportunities by moving up there, but it, it did not look like that was um, something that could be done easily. Did you consider the whole area all the way up to the tunnel? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I understand what Bob, you know, is looking at the area, it's more level, there's more room, it's easier to get to, but by just looking at it, it seems to me that 
the highway itself is going to become another barrier between the station at the location and downtown. I'm not sure if that's that's how far back we want to go. Well, and, Walnut, and, and, Walnut and, Street connects to Trumbull pretty easily. Right. I mean, one of the things about a train station is you want to have it in a location that it's easy access, not only by pedestrian but also by automobile and. If we are going through the efforts of routing 84 in the train tracks to make this whole effort, but then putting the station again behind the, the highway, uh, with the highway now becoming, remaining as a barrier, you know, I'm not sure if, if, if really um, that would help downtown. You also lose the opportunity for highly visible, iconic building. Um, right. Because that's a much more invisible space. So, so just to your point of, of, of that notion, your initial concern was that you don't have enough space here to properly put a train station? And no. that's the, the rationale for moving? Or do you think the site's better served for other uses? Number one, I, I thought it, it, there's a chance it could be better used in another way. Second is I think the topography mm -hmm issues that have been discussed already are ameliorated somewhat by by moving it farther north. I don't know whether the train, since we're already rerouting the train tracks down there, whether you could straighten out a section to make it work or not. <coughs> Clearly my idea is not deeply no. developed. But yeah, I, no, but I mean, I think that the key is the takeaways of, of, of what's motivating the, that thought process and, and trying to think about, well, okay, so how, how can we make something work because you do attempt, you do. We have a challenging template at that location. I mean, it's been brought up by a couple, a couple of people. How do you, how do you make this pedestrian uh, experience a strong one, irrespective of where the station goes? I think we want to make this pedestrian experience a strong one. You know, anyway, uh, whether whether that works for, you know, um, the, you know, I think the one of the things we've been thinking about is the how much pressure is put on asylum to be the only way to connect from here to here. So you want to populate asylum to really make it that strong, attractive street. Um, but we also think maybe there's ch chances to kind of support that with some other uh, local roads that can, that can, uh, can, can bring people. And to that the point, to the degree this, you know, we have a long frontage of train station, that might want to be more compressed because of the slope. Yeah. So you can have great front doors on here and not require a multi-level changes. Yeah, some of those examples that uh, David showed, although they might be attractive, those train stations, they are a long expanse of barrier that is not as walkable as multiple retail or other kinds of things. One of the reasons I like the train station where it was in, in option one is the fact that it's built over the highway in land that otherwise wouldn't be developed upon. Uh, you know, we talked about how difficult it is built over the highway. I like the fact that it's using that space creatively in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, some of the options the DOT has presented previously also had the parking and the bus transactions, or I'm sorry, bus interactions over the highway as well. So my tweak to that design would be to push the bus parking over the highway and then opening up more developable space between the existing union station and the bus parking. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. For Frog Hollow, we like the train station where it is as opposed to further north because it's easier, more easily accessible. Uh, one of the things that we've been pushing for. you forward, say where it is, you mean where it is now uh, or, or where it is in this drawing? One of those two locations as opposed to oh, I pushing the station further the north. Um, and it's just basically because it's closer to Frog Hollow, it's easier for us to access. Um, along the lines of, of what has been mentioned as well as about, you know, one of the things that we're strongly pushing for in this project is not just better connectivity between Asylum Hill and downtown, but also between Frog Hollow and downtown. Um, and I wonder if a way to do that is by reconnecting Flower Street, if we could extend that cap to Flower Street over the highway so that we have a more direct connect to Bushnell Park and Flower Street, open up some of those sight lines. Here? Yes. Thank you. Um, yes. No, I, I, you know, I think I, I would like it further north just because it seems to be concentrating I mean, Union, Union Station now, the buses and that little tiny street, it's a lot of congestion and there's a highway ramp down there, but now you're gonna be moving the train station and a new highway ramp into a smaller area instead of, a, you know, it's more concentrating and taking out a lot, a lot of housing 
uh, a residential in, in that along the along the road there. It feels very squeezed or jammed, as Bob said. <laughs> I would speak up for a, a compact design similar to uh, option one uh, in that area. I think that uh, particularly pedestrian and bicycle connectivity are a key issue. Uh, and the more compact the design, uh, the more ability we have to do that. And, and it can certainly be iconic, as you say, if, we, if you want to do that. But uh, uh, I, I just think it makes more sense. Uh, connections uh, to Bushnell Park, Connections to the capital. Um, I love the I love the idea of sight lines. Uh, so yeah. I want to put in a pitch for the design that Bill Mokarski and I have developed together here. Um, if you start with the view corridor between the Hartford and the Capitol, and what you put between the two, well. You're not quite oh. on it, but okay. yes. Um, and make that connection between, visually make that connection with a transit mall that comes off a roundabout at, that replaces the Trident. Um, essentially, a Farmington Avenue extension that goes from that roundabout to Bushnell Park. To Bushell Park West, and that's where all the buses go, and the bikes, and the and the pedestrians, and the so station saying, itself. You're saying the the bus facility comes down here right, somewhere, right? Right, and the station itself is more like what you have here. Only it wouldn't be blocking the view corridor; it would be a little bit south and a little bit to the right. I'm going to pull up, Tony, one of the ones that we sketched out there. So, uh, sorry, it was another one. Oh, that's right. There's an idea. Different photos. I'd like to mess them up. Concept G? Is yeah. that what you're yes. thinking of? Concept G is the closest to what we've been thinking. So, just it's a new map. Um, can I call it a point? Um, so, you know, new map, you can see farm. This, this has the trident kind of configured yeah. as it is today. Uh -huh. Asylum, Broad, Bushnell Park West is Road A with the ramps. The ramps kind of this, you know, come out from underneath the cap. So mm -hmm. The idea again here is that it, it's really using that cap space between Asylum, Broad, Bushnell Park West, and this new road here right. uh, to, to constitute the transit center. Right. That's very, very, very similar to what? Well, I'll, uh, give you, I'll give you a well, copy of this. No, I think, I think we probably have it, but yeah, no, I, yeah, if you want to move on with the I don't think you have a copy of this. Have you sent that one, though? We, I know. Um, you know, I probably did, did, we just did that last night. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I sent it to two, two in the morning. That's why I'm tired. Clear voice. <laughs> <laughs> but that concept also includes development on, I mean, part of the transportation center on, on the north as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like a, a garage that can be built in the first phase above the new highway line. And one of the interesting things I think about having facilities south of Farmington Asylum, you know, one of the um, CT fast track alternatives under consideration, they're still they're still kind of filtering through the three or four that we're looking at. One of them would have a, a tunnel for CT fast track that would go underneath Broad Street and kind of merge into this road down here. And one of the strongest benefits of, of, of having the station site here would be to allow some connectivity from that directly into the station site, uh, whereas in some of the other you know, concepts that are located up to the north, it's a, you know, a, a CT fast track route would be a little bit more circuitous to, to get there. Um, one sort of thing I'd say in defense, well, sort of two notions kind of more toward the idea of a more southerly location for the for rail station, um, and one reason one reason I was asking about the like contour lines and sort of the topography is, is if one that if a station more or less at Asylum and Broad, give or take, um, if if the land slopes enough, that would could potentially essentially be a two or three story building at that corner and maybe a six story building because I don't know how much of a drop off there is. So, so you could potentially stack a lot in there. 
um, and it would still be very visible with, without a huge footprint. Um, and the other thing is, you know, some of the hardest people to convince to actually give us to support um, good transit, you know, anything that isn't um, very car centric, is to convince um, lawmakers that this is a good idea. And if we have a really good transit facility that's so close that they'll start to think about, you know, well, maybe I can, like a lot of Washington politicians do, they take Amtrak to the nation's capital. If this is something where, wow, this is actually really close and it works, then that could kind of help not only gain support for transit in Hartford, but statewide. Um, I like I like where this is going um, with the uh, station and the uh, bus hub actually, you know, interacting directly uh, and on the, over the Capitol Highway. That that's something that I'm coming around to is being excited about uh, because of the limitations that other developments would have. The if I'm looking at this and thinking. Uh, of other connections that would be good to make. I, it, I would think, is that Fine Street up that dies? I would think that wants to come all the way down to Spruce. It's Garden um, Street. Or sorry, yeah, Garden Street. Garden mm -hmm. Street up in the, in the left the corner. I would, I would want to, I would, I would want to grid street that into, into Spruce. Uh -huh. And um, then I would be thinking about uh, uh, how to, put the parking garage that this is gonna have far enough away from it uh, that people have to cross the street and walk past places to buy food and not put it in that same development. I would put it north of Asylum over the other cap so they have to cross the street and pass businesses and walk a little ways outside. The, the notion of taking these um, nodal elements and dispersing them a little bit so that you get people more oriented. Specifically the parking garage. That we put them inside the building or under the building, and folks that come in go straight to their destination, either corporate headquarters or rail station, and they never, you know, spend money in the city. Can I ask you a question about the, the Garden Street extension yeah. of Spruce? Is that is something that, that we've um, you know talked with uh, the uh, WSP HOK team about? I mean, would you feel as strongly about that street if it was a 10% hill? Um, the I, street was that steep. I, I, I see it as your way to not walk or ride on asylum, mm -hmm. which is a, your scarier route uh, if somebody's just trying to get across town. Sure. Like you're, you get, I, the, we haven't said it yet, but you want to design your transportation network for everyone between age 8 and 80 uh, such that you could imagine them independently getting across that on their own. and. I know it's what asylum is now, and this doesn't look like it'll make it any less busy. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone that's eight or eighty. From a from a cyclist safety standpoint, uh, yeah, anybody. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. want an eighty-year-old in a car on asylum. What you about? Or or anyone or anyone in a car on yeah. asylum. <laughs> so. Apologies to all eighty-year-olds in the room. Yeah. Sorry, not. <laughs> Well, just one, yeah, sure. just one more thing between this option two and option one, as well as the other option of where the station is and the, and the lower side. One of the things to keep in mind and consider is the drop off and pick up area for both the train station and the bus station, and how does that in, in impact the flow of traffic from the highway in and out of the highway? So, if we look at option one, for example, the drop off area and pick up area for the station, the bus it's closer to the exit ramps at the uh, highway on the, on the north side, and that may create a conflict in those streets. Whereas on the south side, uh, in, this, in this solution here, or the other one, the uh, on and off, uh, maybe the drop off and pick up area, both for the station and the bus station, are off the grid on their own, and uh, th there's much less conflict with the with the rest of the highway traffic. Mm -hmm. So, to me, that's worth considering <laughs> and, yeah. and finding the right solution, the right location. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you, you want all modes 
to be very effective in seamlessly and easily moving in and out of this area. The buses coming and going should not be conflicting with pedestrians. The pick up and drop off, which is a different cycle. So I think I think you make a very good point about start, starting to think about the different elements, and you probably can't read this, my handwriting is very sloppy, but the different elements of how people access the station and what kind of road works for what kind of access. And I think that's a really important point. And that's something we definitely need to get into and consider as we begin to shape exactly where these mm -hmm. um, pieces fit into this urban fabric. Thanks. Cool. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little lost in the weeds here. Uh, if I'm on 84 right now, and here's the public safety complex, and here's the uh, foot guard, and now it's start, starting to rise. The whole point, we're bringing this down. So I'm going to be staying at grade level at this point. With an off ramp right off the Spruce Street in the point, and conversely, an on ramp back to 84 Westbound right there. You're going to be losing the exits, uh, the uh, exits on Asylum, Signy, and <coughs> and um, Sisson, correct? Westbound. Yes. Uh, wait, not Signy. 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 Yeah. Uh, Sisson, you're losing, and Asylum, you're losing. No, right. Sisson changes. Sisson changes. Yes. Not losing. <laughs> but, no, but, no, but we're gaining, we're gaining an, uh, an off ramp right there, right where it's curves. Now, yeah. if I'm at the if I'm at the train station right now, looking out, and I see the street, the parking lot, the elevated highway, so, so Asylum Street's rising over westbound and it's below eastbound. No, yeah, that's now, correct. I mean, now. Right now, yeah, eastbound's coming down. Yes, yes. From the east-west point of view, where is the eastbound going? Is it going farther, farther west? Yeah. So on this map. The um, existing highways right here. Yep. The entire freeway um, is proposed to be relocated a couple hundred feet to the west. To the west. And, and where are the new tra Where are new tracks going to be? East to the to west. west. Of, to the west, to the west of that. That's this. Are they going to be about, about where the, where the uh, 84 uh, eastbound elevated part is right now? And from an east to west point of view, is that? The, the, they they will actually be. With, you should answer this. But, they will be lower than yeah. that where the tracks are coming through. They'll actually be at the height of where the new I-84 will be going through. And from a topography point of view, is that going to be, if, if I'm right where the on-ramp is for 84 west right there, and then it starts, Asylum Street starts to rise. From a topography point of view, where the tracks would be down here, way up at the very at the peak of the same, like way down, the way down here. They'd, they'd be about 40 feet below Asylum Street. So, okay. So they're they're actually the same level they're at today, but okay. because of the, the the height of Asylum Hill, they're now rather than being above Asylum Street like they are today, yeah. they're now forty feet below to pass beneath Farmington and Asylum. That's so they'll all be they'll be tunneled. There's just like you totally tunneled, like you're saying. They just want to kind of like just cap their on the would, inside. It would likely be. It would seem like a tunnel as you were in the railroad. Maybe look at the three D model. Yeah. <laughs> it's really going to portray it much easier for you. Yeah, you guys already have. Sorry, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what these are for. So let me hear the existing first. Here's what you have today. Yes. So freeways there goes over right. asylum and under asylum. Right. Speak up, uh, Nick. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so today you have it like this, where the freeway, the westbound lanes go underneath the asylum, eastbound lanes go over. Here you have the Capitol View apartments, and this is asylum. Show the trident here. That's the trident is right. Right. There. Right. So then without, without the cap, here's what it looks like. So Asylum stays exactly where it is today. Yeah. The freeway moves a little to the left here and down. And the railroad tracks are essentially at the same level as the freeway, but even farther to the west. So this is, OK, and that's the arch building right there in the old train station. OK, I'm just trying to, OK, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Problem? And now, now the question is, where are, you, where are you putting the train and bus or train and or bus stations? Exactly. Yeah. Right, but that's from a that's where you, where you have to go with, with respect to these are the we're dotting eyes across and T's, but that's where the highway has to be. Yeah, that's where the trains that's where are going to have to be at this point. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. That helps a lot. So about three we're stories down, to be accurate. Yeah. I'd like to say that one of the problems with the asylums no, streets. Asylum Avenue, rather, today, is that it's a, the craziest part of it is right here. It comes into a V for Farmington. And uh, nobody, first of all, that doesn't live in the area for 50 years knows how to operate that or how to work their way through that intersection in a car. And uh, that is going to all be eliminated. 
So you've got four streets coming together. You've got Spring Street, Garden Street, the highway, Coswell, you know, the highway ramp coming up, the Coswell, Asylum, and Farmington Avenue, and Broad Street. So that's, a lot of that is going to change. So it's not going to be crossing Asylum Avenue, I think, in the future. It's not going to be the threatening um, thing that it is today. We hope not. Yeah. We hope not. We want to make it comfortable for everybody. Well, um, thank you very much for um, helping us work through as we build in this context. Um, and, you know, we're going to continue to refine these ideas and concepts and, and, and uh, you know, obviously come back and show you our progress. So, the, yeah. Um, so we're talking as a team about keeping the momentum going. So as quickly as we can assemble another date and time and venue, we'd like to do that. It could be as quick as two or three weeks. We'll, we'll let folks know. Uh, and we'll try to format a little differently so that folks who want to really sink their teeth into, say, the Trident area or the East End area have ample time. And then we'll also have the multimodal station uh, discussion and we'll keep, keep things moving along pretty quickly. Any, you know, we're here, you seem to have some more patience. Uh, any thoughts, <laughs> questions, comments? Yes, Rich, uh, going back to the uh, beginning when we were talking about the uh, triangle and the closure of, of Broad Street at that point there, one of the things that you showed us as solutions was the uh, uh, making Asylum <laughs> Avenue a portion of it one way, so you're rerouting traffic in the existing street layout and uh, and I was wondering, I, I looked at the earlier uh, separate meeting, and that seemed to me to make a lot of sense to alleviate the traffic at that point where we want to cut off Broad Street and still keep Broad Street intact. Yeah. So I wonder if we can we'll maybe explore, that. explore yeah. that a little bit further. Some one-way changes that could potentially manage traffic and, and right. keep that Broad Street connection. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? If We're happy to. If you did that, though. Yeah. What are the concerns? My name is Jay Stan McCauley, and uh, I do business as Light Source Productions. I provide professional services in the area of strategic video communications. Uh, first, what we do is we help you craft your message uh, using what I call the rule of the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. We do event documentation, uh, content acquisition, full-scale productions, um, editing, and, of course, distribution uh, through our social media television network. And with social media, uh, video is more important now than it has ever been. Uh, whether you're talking big business, small business, nonprofit, church, or just an individual. Uh, let's say you, you know you you plan uh, uh, you're planning an event, a wedding, whatever the case may be. But but let's say a big event, uh, but no video. And you spend all this time, all these hours, uh, to put this event on, and maybe a hundred, two hundred people attend the event. But more important than that is that thousands could attend by watching it on social media. But of course you don't think about this until after the event is over. You can't afford not to capture it for social media. And despite what people think, I am affordable. Give me a call. Let's plan your next video project and share it with the world on my social media television network. I promise you that you will have the attention of one person, me.